Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about all the books I've collectively read in the past couple of months. Before we get started though, please let me know down in the comments below if you guys would rather see monthly wrap-ups compared to a wrap-up that I'm doing right now. Just because sometimes I feel like I don't read enough for that particular month to warrant a video. You know, like I'm just gonna be talking about one or two books. I don't know, let me know down below um, because that really helps me out. So for this collective wrap up, I read almost a total of 30 plus books in like the past three to four months, I wanna say. However, I will only be talking about half the number of those books just because I am planning on doing another video for the other half of the books. I read these particular books um, for this video in mind. Basically, spoiler, it's a recommendations video. So you'll see what it comes out if it ever comes out. So I'll be talking about these 16 books in order from worst to best. With that being said, I also wanna give a big thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. So if you guys weren't aware what Book of the Month is, they're basically a super popular and fast online growing book service for readers. Their mission is basically to promote new and emerging authors to help readers discover the books that they love. Basically how it works is that their team vets hundreds of books every month and they give readers a choice from a curated selection of new and early release titles so that you can spend more time reading and less time researching. One of the best features of Book of the Month is this relationship that you have with each other. It's a great relationship you can't find anywhere else, trust me. For example, if this particular month, say next month, you look at their list and you're not really into any of them, just hold that thought, push that skip button, and you can skip that particular month. You can skip any time, any month, risk-free. It's basically a relationship you can control. The ball is basically on your end of the court. You can't really do that in any other relationship, if you get what I mean. So Book of the Month sent me their November selection. So let's go ahead and check this out. We have a romance book, this time next year, about a couple that keep on running into each other. Next, we have a literary fiction book, Memorial, about another couple and their imperfect relationship that explores the highs and lows of love. These Violent Delights, a young adult take on a Romeo and Juliet retelling that takes place in Shanghai. Fourthly, we have Pretty Little Wife, a thriller novel about a dead husband gone missing. The Star-Crossed Sisters of Tuscany, a family drama that takes place in the Italian countryside. So if you guys are definitely interested, you guys can use this code here on the screen to get your first book for only $9.99. <laughs> I just sound like one of those commercials right there. For literally $10, you can get a book that's normally costing you $25 to $30. Everything will be basically down in the description box below. Once again, thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. And we have a lighting change. Love that for me. Let's go ahead and get straight into this reading wrap up. All right, so like I said before, we are going from worst to best. On the bottom of that pile is The Binding by Bridget Collins. Guys, let me tell you, this book, okay. You can't see it now, but I'm crossing my legs, meaning we're about to get serious. I was going into this book with a sort of expectations, okay? Because the blurb mentioned a man taking an apprenticeship about book binding where Basically, you take people's memories and you bind them in the book. Painful memories, whatever memories they want to forget, and you shelve them. And then this man finds a memory of his in a book and he doesn't remember putting it there. I feel like the blurb was so misleading and that the plots with him being an apprenticeship as a bookbinder was just a huge plot device, like a huge misdirection. That's basically the gist of what this book is trying to tell you what it's about. I had so many problems with this book. It's a very slow paced book. And if you really like that, I mean, and I didn't really have any problems with the slow pacing of it all. I just had a problem with the pacing of the story in general, the characters, and several of the themes and aspects that were going around in this book. Everybody is constantly sweating or vomiting in this book. I don't know why. Everybody's just constantly sick. And the main characters, you know, they're supposed to be flushed out. These gray area characters that have characteristic qualities to them. However, I couldn't really root for those certain characters because none of them had any redeeming qualities whatsoever. They were either selfish or manipulative or lying to themselves or one another. And there was just so much of that negativity going on that I couldn't at all relate or root for any of these characters. I feel like every single female character in this book was written as a setup or a backdrop for the other main characters who are male. And this book takes place in the 19th century. The women who um, aren't married, who are sleeping around or fooling around with other men um, are basically called whores. However, that didn't bother me as much as the irony with the fact that these two main characters who are both gay are sleeping with each other, but consider themselves above these women. Like the two main characters, they're literally doing the same thing and there isn't really a double standard. No one's really calling them out for it. They're not even thinking about it at all. They're not thinking that what they're doing is sort of contrasting to what other women are doing. Anyways, I feel like this book was trying to be something else. I feel like it really underutilized 
the story that it was trying um, to tell. I really wish that it expanded upon you know, book binding because I love books about books. I feel like the writing was probably the best aspect of this book. The third act, by the way, in this book blew my mind in the worst way possible. The payoff did make sense. It was so stupid. There was no satisfaction at all. It ended really abruptly as well. It basically did a 180 from where the book started to where it ended. And especially the villain, the main antagonist, had no consequences for his actions whatsoever. Rape was basically used as a plot device. Overall, this book had no merits or quality to it. I think this book tries too hard to set it up for what it actually is, which is just a pretty standard bland book in my opinion. Thank you for listening to my rant review of this book. One out of five stars for this one. So the next book, rounding out to be a 2.5 out of 5, is Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Powers. To be honest, I really can't remember anything about it, which says a lot about it I guess because it was pretty forgettable. Alright, so I'm going over my notes for this book and the only redeeming quality it has for me is how weird and strange this book was. This book took me on a journey but not on a very satisfying one. I was pretty bored until three-fourths of the way in until the mystery of the why of it all um, came into play and it didn't really make any sense to me. I feel like this is one of those books that would have been better as a TV show or a movie, like a Black Mirror episode. This book basically follows a young girl who goes off to find in search of her mother's extended family. After being on the run with her mother for quite some time, um, she finally just is sick of this shit and just like, you know what mom? Peace out. I'm gonna find out your extended family. There's a reason why her mother is running but of course the daughter doesn't want to listen. This book explores the dynamics in a relationship between a mother and a daughter and I'm really interested in reading books about that but I feel like this book didn't really commit to the theme of a mother and daughter relationship as I would have liked. However, I really appreciated like the backdrop, the really hot small town setting, lots of corn, you know, it really reminded me of Kansas. Yeah, there's really not too much I can say about this except for the fact that I didn't really like it. I thought it was really underwhelming and it would have been better, I feel like, not as a book but as an actual live adaption or something. So, two out of five stars. All right, so the final book we have in our two out of five star category is The Sin Eater by Megan Campisi. I gave this book 2.5 out of five stars, almost a three, but I felt like it was really lackluster in terms of its like mystery setting. This book basically follows a young girl, a sin eater, who goes into people's houses, listens to their sins, and eats food that is um, according or attributed to that particular sin. One day, her mentor refuses to eat a deer heart which symbolizes a really grave sin and she's put to death. So this young apprentice, this young girl is, you know, making her way in this castle, in this village, trying to figure out the why of it all while trying to maintain her status as a sin eater. The premise itself is really interesting and the concept as well, but I felt like story-wise and plot and pacing wise, it didn't really live up or match to my expectations. I was really bored of it all. It was just very slow moving in the way that not a lot happened with the main character trying to figure out what has happened or who has done what a who done it the who done it i immediately guessed it was very obvious to me and there was no big payoff at the ends i figured out the who and the why pretty early on and it's a really short book so i feel like there wasn't much as an impact for me a lot of you guys might like it because not gonna lie it was interesting at some parts but overall a rather forgettable experience all right so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to film this on another day because my battery is about to die hey everyone it's the next day batteries fully charged so let's go ahead and get right into it we're now heading in to the books i gave three stars to the first one of that rating is blood and honey by shelby mahurin this is the sequel to serpent and dove um, which came out last year and i love the first one i thought the first one was great it was really fun and it had a lot of things going on for it can't say the same for the second one. I think for me, the second book tried a little too hard to exceed the first. I think it was just one of those instances where it suffered heavily from middle book syndrome. The second main character in this book, Love Interest, Reed, he got so frustrating and irritating to read from. I get that he's going on a hero's journey, but the way he goes at it is just whining and complaining and having second thoughts. And I'm like, dude, we get it, just get over it. But he couldn't get over it and he just always would back down, always would just hurt others around him. It was just really frustrating to read most of the time. So really hated that. At the end of the first book, uh, no spoilers, but they were supposed to venture into a new territory, right? And sort of expand on that aspect of the ending. And going into this one, I really thought they would you know, give us that, that juicy aspect, hidden depth and exploration. Instead, it was more like 30 pages and it was done. It was so short, like the build up from the first book into the second one was practically non-existent. And a lot of the story points for certain characters dragged on a lot I was not a fan of. I just wasn't really feeling for any of the characters or the direction that the story was going. But in the end, it did pick up 
but in an even more confusing way. It's just one of those endings that just comes right in the middle of nowhere, smack dab, left field, that you're just like, huh. Not sure where you're going with this, but I sort of understand and I sort of don't. Confused, but at the same time intrigued. We'll see with the third book. I will continue finishing the series, but the second book was was not great. So I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5. The next book is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Jennifer Lynn Barnes is practically one of my go-to YA authors because I really like the way she writes thriller mystery books. And so when I heard she was coming with this one, sort of a nice out situation. I was immediately intrigued and very interested. However, upon finishing the book, I think of all the books that I've read from her so far, I think this is mediocre at best. It's not her best work, but it's not bad either. This book really reminded me of the books I read back in the day when I first started reading YA. There was a lot of angst, teen drama, and romance, and a lot of, you know, intrigue and everything. But it wasn't enough to satisfy where I am now, you know, currently, in my reading tastes and everything. So not saying that it's a bad book per se, but it's not a really great one either. So this book follows our main character, Avery, and she finds out that she's invited to this wheel hearing of a really renowned, famous, dead dude. She goes to this wheel hearing and she finds out that she has inherited his entire fortune, his big ass mansion, and the only catch is that in order to keep everything, she has to stay in the house and solve a bunch of riddles and puzzles, and also, you know, stay out of the limelight with the other four grandsons who were cut out of the will. It sounded so good and so interesting because it has one of my favorite tropes where the main character receives a mysterious letter from like a dead benefactor inheriting all a bunch of this wealth and money and not knowing why. There are actually a couple of thriller books that are centered around this trope and I really liked it. However, for this one, I felt like that was like a backdrop compared to all the, I guess I wanna say romance at the forefront. There was so much angst and romance in here that I just didn't really care about. I wanted more of riddles and puzzles and some of the riddles and puzzles that the way she solved them, it was just too convenient for my taste. I felt like this didn't fully live up to its potential. I'm gonna say that if you're into sort of like mystery and romance, and sort of want that factor where the main character has to undergo certain trials and tribulations in order to achieve this grand wealth and wonder why they're the chosen one, I recommend this book. Three to five out of five stars. Okay, so with that being said, we're heading straight into the four out of fives. Before we get started on those, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Ember and the Ashes trilogy, which I did read and I had a reading vlog for it, so you guys can all um, watch that if you guys are interested. And I gave the first book four, four out of five, and the next two, five out of five, because they were that good. The last book comes out this December, so I'm pretty excited for that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys wanna catch my full thoughts on that, I'll leave a link to that video somewhere on the screen. The first book in my four out of five category is Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. So out of all the books that I'm talking about today, this is probably the most confusing and chaotic book out of all of them. There was so much and yet so little going on in this book. The plot is very simple. So this book follows a young couple who are on their honeymoon. They're going to this tourist attraction called the Tower of Babel. However, there she gets kidnapped and he must ascend into these certain levels. Very interesting levels, by the way, of the certain tower to get his wife back. Honestly, at its core, that's it. That's pretty much the plot that this book has going on for it. There isn't a lot going on. This is one of those interesting books where there aren't a lot of things going on with the main character. He doesn't do a lot of things. However, it's basically everyone and everything around him, the environment, the situation that he's in that makes up for the general plot, if that makes any sense. There are these uh, certain levels that he has to go up to get his wife back and rescue her. And these levels are so interesting. It's so convoluted and messy and dark and twisted. And some of them actually really gorgeous and beautiful. The writing is really great, but at the same time, there are a lot of things that I felt like I was just so overwhelmed by. I had to go and reread certain passages over and over again because there was just so much going on on each level in this world. But the main character was just like a step back, you know, like a breather, because he didn't really do anything much. But the funny thing is, as he ascends, he breaks out of this shell, this mold, and transforms and turns into the hero that we're pretty much all rooting for, this badass hero at the end. It was a really great transformation, a really great arc to see and read. The major points I have to give to this book, though, is that this book I can really see as a Studio Ghibli film, a really great recipe for a Studio Ghibli movie. This is the first in a trilogy. Not gonna lie, it was a lot you know, at first, because it was a very slow paced moving book for a lot of things that are happening in it. If you're looking for just a really fun romp, but slow, really colorful and vast 
I guess, adventure that I suggest picking this book up. There isn't a lot of fantasy or magical elements in this book, but that doesn't really matter because the whole world in and of itself is so intricate and detailed that I actually want to go and visit. But a very strong 4 out of 5, and I am definitely hoping to read his other books in the series. Alright, the next 4 out of 5, Bunny by Mona Awad. So I know I said this already, but this book... This book is so fucking weird. And I emphasize that sentence with my whole being. Think whatever you want about this book or predict whatever you want to predict, whatever you think might happen. No. Let me just say that you will never, ever see what is going to happen or coming because this is one of those books where I feel like the less you know, the better the experience. And I get that some people, you know, are annoyed because they're like, oh, well, I want to know what the book is about. And in a nutshell, let me just tell you, if I had to explain what this book was about, I'm just going to say this. This book is a product of a love triangle. If Mean Girls and Alice in Wonderland fell in love with the craft. That's pretty much all you need to know. A lot of people actually would describe this book as dark academia and, you know, to a certain extent, I agree. This book was truly weird and astounding and the ending, ho oh, the ending! One of the main things I can really appreciate about this book is that I had to go and talk to other people who have read this book because this book prompts such weird and strange discussions, especially at the end. I feel like this is just one of those strange books that I would probably have never picked up if it weren't for the reviews of other people. And I'm so glad that I did because there were a lot of things in this book that I did not like. I was here, you know, in the middle and almost at the end of the book where I was like, you know, I'm going to give this book two out of five stars or three out of five stars. And then I finished the book and I was like, you know what? Four out of five because it just left such a mark and impact on me that I feel like it will just basically make you want to Google and just go on Reddit forums and everything and just read what other people think because it's so interesting to me what people interpret what this book is at its core. So if that interests you, highly recommend. So the next four out of five is The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Haro. So prior going into this book, I heard nothing but great and fantastic things. But upon reading the book, there were a lot of things that bothered me. In the end, you know, I'm just overall sum. It's a very beautiful written book with a really interesting story. I can't really say the same for the characters. The characters to me were probably the most abysmal part of the book. I really liked everything else about the book though. Overall, it was a really strong debut. It had a lot of things I really liked and I wish some of the things that I liked were, you know, a little more expanded upon, but that's okay. This book also contains my favorite aspects that I love to read in other books, like books about books or doors that lead to different worlds. Things like that. This book follows a main character who finds a secret book. And this book is a book about doors, um, different doors that lead to these different wondrous, strange, and dangerous worlds. This book is very reminiscent of The Starless Sea. Very similar, but very vastly different. I wouldn't even compare the two. The only thing that they have going for it, the same thing, is that it's a book about books at its core. Four out of five, so... Okay, so I have to turn on the lights again because it got really dark. So the next book is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This was really, really enjoyable. However, I feel like out of all the books that I've read from Riley Sager, this is probably my least favorite. Honestly, books about haunted houses or books supposedly about haunted houses, there's just something about them that doesn't click right with me. Like I have yet to read a perfect haunted house book because there's so many tropes that I really hate about haunted houses. There's just so many things that can go wrong with haunted houses in general. We follow this main character who as a child experienced something really horrifying in this new house that her family has moved in. Years later, after her father has died, she has inherited this house and she's a fixer-upper of sorts. So she goes to this house and she wants to sell it. However, she finds certain things, certain secrets that questions her past experience with everything in this house. So there were a lot of things I really liked about this book and a lot of things I didn't like. I didn't really care for the um, present. This book alternates between past and present and I actually wanted more from the past because it sounded so interesting to me. When a character goes back to a place that they've already been to, that to me already just washes away sort of the beginning fear and beginning tension I already have because I'm like oh well you're safe now nothing is happening in the past that you know is gonna influence you in the present if that makes any sense. The ending of this book was crazy to me because because where I thought at a point where this book would end it just kept on going and I was like this is crazy honestly the ending saved this book for me because there are so many points in this book towards the ending like the last 30 pages where I thought it would end or going off in a different direction and it just completely did a 180 and I was just like holy shit but honestly it was a very strong thriller book not exactly horror not exactly what I wanted in a haunted house book 
but did it deliver on sort of the mystery and the thriller aspect? I would say yes. There were a lot of tropes in here that are very generic where the main character would do something really stupid out of the ordinary, you know, where you would roll your eyes that the main character did that in a horror movie. But you know, in the end, I gotta forgive those mistakes because the ending, <sighs> highly recommend for a really good scare. So the next book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this one I feel like I've talked about a lot recently just because I have a reading vlog for it if you guys are interested in watching that. This to me, of all the books that I'm talking about today, is probably one of the most hype books I've ever heard in my entire life. So many people have commented, oh, I thought you were gonna talk about the Bible or the Iliad or the Odyssey, and I'm just like, I didn't realize those were actually really hyped books because to me, when this book first came out, it was essentially the only book I've heard talked about everywhere on BookTube, Book Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. And for the longest time, that's pretty much everyone was talking about. So this book didn't really sound appealing to me as it did before. Boy, was I wrong because this book was so, so good. I feel like essentially this is the book that if people were like, oh, what is a good book um, that you would recommend? I would probably recommend this book. This book was really fun. It was really devastating and lovely. It was a really great time. I have a reading vlog all about it. And I also did a live show for this book for a book club that I'm hosting with two other lovely people. And in that live show, we dived heavily into this book with spoilers. So if you guys want to hear my thoughts on that, go and check those videos out. All right, the next book, four to five, The Secret History, but not a tart. This is one of my most polarizing ratings that I've ever given to a book because throughout the entire reading process, I just didn't really have a good time. I wasn't really enjoying myself. And upon finishing it, I was like, definitely three out of five stars, two even. I need to sleep on this. It was just so conflicting to me how it all ended, how everything in this book just happened. After waking up, I thought more about it. And I was like, okay, you know, this book resonated with me so heavily and so deeply that you know what? Fuck it, four out of five. This book I also read for the Late Night Book Club. And I think of all the three of us that read it, I was the only one that really gave it a really high rating. But not to say that it's a really enjoyable high rating. It's one of those ratings where this book really did something to me. It really made me think, it made me really prosper in a lot of things. It was really climactic, really overwhelming. I feel like this book would really inspire really great conversations, especially in a classroom setting. This book basically is about these group of students who commit a murder. That's not a spoiler because it's literally in the first page of the book. It's more about the why than the who um, for the murder mystery in this book. And the murder at its forefront isn't integral to the book. It's more about the characters and the relationships that they have with each other. I feel like I would have to reread this book at some point, but not anytime soon. Okay, so now we are getting into the last two books, 4.5 out of 5 stars. The first one is One by One by Ruth Ware. I was initially going to save my thoughts and my ratings for the live show that we're going to have for this um, book. So if you guys didn't know, the Late Night Book Club was invited by Kayla, her club, the Literary Dead Book Club, to join in and read this book for her book club. But I'm just going to tell you guys my rating. 4.5 out of 5. I had such a great time reading this, even though, even though I called everything. I predicted everything. There was... No surprises to me whatsoever, but I love the settings. I love the settings so much for this book. This book just gave me a really great dose of serotonin, maybe at the time while I was reading it, but I feel like maybe if I read it now, I wouldn't have given it such a high rating. But who knows? Who knows? Overall, I just know I had a really great time and bam, four to five. Easiest four to five I've ever given. This book follows a big group of people. You essentially stick them in this middle of nowhere situation and a natural disaster. Cue all that tension, all that pain, and all that suffering, and you have a murder mystery. And I'm not going to go into too much depth explaining what happens and whatnot because you guys will hear my all my thoughts and reactions for this book for that live show. The live show will be on Kayla's channel, Books and Lala, so be on the lookout for that one. Last and not least, I finally have the last book in this video. Cloud in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. Okay, so this is one of those books where I feel like you have to have sort of a bias, a partial bias to it because if you like horror, but if you especially like slasher horror movies, but in book form, then I feel like you will love this book. Um, I love horror, as you can tell, Scream, one of my favorite horror movies ever, but I love sort of the subgenre, slashers. Slashers to me are just the top tier um, in any horror genre. They're just that epic, you know? There's just something about a killer just going on and slashing, murdering people. I don't know what that says about me. This book just chef's kiss. It was so fun. It was so bloody. It had the highest body counts I've ever read in any book, in any slasher book. It is essentially about a girl who moves into a small, like, ugly town in the middle of nowhere. In this town, there are certain people who have conventional and just traditional methods that they don't like seeing these young and upcoming 
new teenagers and growth. This new generation, they don't like technology. They're very conservative, if you would say. You know, one night at a party that this girl attends, there's this murderous clown, and he goes off on a murderous rampage. This book pulls out all the stops. Chainsaw, arrows, explosions, knives, everything you could ever ask for in a slasher movie is definitely here in this book. So I had a really great fun time reading this and I gave it a really fun 4 to 5. You know, 4.5, it's a different 4.5 for my enjoyment taste because I feel like this is one of those books where if you went really in with a critical and analytical eye, you would probably could tear this book apart because there are so many things you could tear apart. But it was just a really great and fun time. So overall, 4.5 out of 5. That is it for this video. Oh my gosh. I just can't believe how long it took me to talk about 16 books. And if I had to sit down and talk about 30 books, that video where I just talk about all the books I read during that month sounds really good to me right now. The other half of the books that I read, the big chunk of them, will be for another video. Hopefully, hopefully I can make it work. Please let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought of all the books that I've talked about. If you guys have read any of these books, please feel free to drop any recommendations that you guys might think that I might enjoy aligning with the books that I talked about in this video. But that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you guys all soon with a new video.